Welcome to episode two of my Life is Strange analysis. We're going to keep going and analyzing every moment of what lies through this door. I want you to pay attention to what lies through this door in particular because it serves two or three different purposes and it's very well done, but it's a little bit subtle. You didn't tell me how cute I looked yet. In addition to the general chatter of the students, we're also going to hear what the students think of Max. They don't like her very much. The school is divided 100% into bullies and the bullied. And while Max falls onto the side of the bullied, rather than getting along with the other people on the bottom of the totem pole, she withdraws into herself and hides. So we're really cementing Max's character at this point, and uh, we know exactly who she is, we know exactly what the school thinks of her, and we know exactly how she reacts to that. These are very powerful concepts, and they're introduced pretty fluidly. But this is where things get a little bit more subtle. Every game has stages, levels, where you walk from one point to another. Whether that's entering a new town and having to talk to the mayor, or climbing a tree to catch a cat, and the tree turns out to be considerably larger than you thought. Whatever the situation is, navigating those levels is always going to be a part of games. What they've done here is, instead of just creating a level where you walk from point A to point B and you see all the students, they've used this otherwise bland setup to do some character development. By limiting the ability to talk or hear other characters, they've turned Max into a ghost. And so we can feel the entire weight of the school. Every student that we'd ever encounter in the game, aside from Nathan, is here. But we don't have the weight of having to learn who they are, or what their motivations are, or anything like that. We can look at them, but we can't say, hey, how's it going? We can't get side quests. We can't do anything. This fits Max's character very, very well, and it also allows a new player to, uh, to not get overwhelmed with the size of the school and the number of people in it. This fits in very well with the basic idea of this game, which is that the first time you encounter any given challenge, you're not going to be asked to do anything complicated. Instead, you keep coming back to the same challenge with more and more refined opinions. And that's true here as well. We can't interact with all of these students. We're not demand, there's no demand that we remember them or anything, but as we continue to play the game, we'll start to interact with them more and more and have more nuanced opinions of them and more nuanced interactions with them. So if you're making a level where you're going to walk from point A to point B, try and think about what you can do to advance the characters, uh, the characterization or advance the plot or anything, even advancing the tone. Uh, don't just plonk some NPCs down and ask the player to talk to them. That's, that's a really shallow way to do it. An easy example is if you're going to enter a town for the first time, you can always have the town be in some sort of conflict, uh, or maybe it's just night, and you're not burdened with the entire town at once. This is a common technique, and you should use it, because it keeps the player from getting overwhelmed, and it allows you to build character really, really easily and fluidly. The last thing I want to bring up is this song. This is a theme song, it's played a lot, and in order to make theme songs like this have power, you have to get your claws in pretty early. And that's what they've done here. The first time you play through this particular set of hallways, you're almost certainly going to hear this song through once in its entirety, and maybe a second time. Uh, and you're going to be hearing it while you're unable to talk to people and barely able to observe them. And you're literally living out this the, the, the lyrics of the song. It matches up very well, and it does get the song stuck in your, in your craw. When you hear it again later, then you're going to have specific emotions about it, and that's exactly what they intended to have happen. So as I said, there's a lot of things going on in this seemingly simple scene. Let's go ahead and enter the bathroom like we're supposed to. Empty. Nobody can see my meltdown, except for me. It should be noted that Max never comes anywhere near melting down. I don't know whether they, she just talks to herself uh, 
as more fragile than she is, or whether they didn't want to implement her ever melting down because the player would feel awkward or something. But she never comes anywhere near melting down at any point in this game, even when things go really, really bad. Anyway, we're just finishing off her characterization here. I feel like the universe is taunting me everywhere I go today. It all started with that bizarro dream in class. Am I going crazy? And we're about to see uh, a butterfly come in through the window, and I want to bring it up just because this butterfly is actually Chloe um, on a, you know, on a, on a metaphorical level. Uh, a lot of the things in this game represent Just relax. Stop Chloe. <laughs> and that's because this is fundamentally a story about her and Chloe. Now you can say, okay, well, who Fuck cares? It. You're just making shit up. Man, we, we tear that, that photo up so many times. But this, uh, this butterfly... When a um, closes, a window opens. I say it metaphorically like that. Re represents Chloe, and some people might be like, you don't, you know, okay, that's well, unimportant, you or you're just making it up, or whatever. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it actually does metaphorically represent Chloe, like 100%. But even if it didn't, this kind of symbolism uh, plays several roles. One is the fact that it is that symbolism. You do get prepped for something that might happen soon, even if it's not on a conscious level. How much you buy into that will depend on your personal tastes. But another role that this butterfly has is flatly mechanical. This is a reason for us to go and hide around this corner. The level is designed with blocking in mind. The player and the other characters are blocked as to how they'll move. Rather than force the player to go over here and trigger stuff, this butterfly allows the player to be lured into moving to the correct position themselves. And this is a trick that you should use as often as possible, because forcing the player to move somewhere is really obnoxious, but luring them to move somewhere isn't. This photo is important in a lot of ways. So here's Nathan. Nathan is the primary antagonist of your per first playthrough of this game. He is not a great kid. It's cool. He's got a lot of problems. He's a drug Don't addict. Stress. He's you violent. Care, okay, bro. Just come to three. And he's rich just, as hell. You own this school. If I wanted, I could blow it up. You're the boss. Pausing for a second here. Uh, watch very carefully and listen very carefully to this whole dialogue sequence starting from here. Because this is a great example of how to do exposition. You probably didn't even realize that about 80% of this conversation is just exposition. So first we've so got some blocking want? tricks. I hope you check the perimeter, as my step ass would say. To make the conversation now, more interesting, we move the characters around and have them wrong. act in different you ways. Hella cash. That's my family. In order to I mean, make this scene hoop, more potent, these two are not just talking, they're right arguing. I bet you're respecting you add drama to a to narrative them. scene, to, yeah, a, to a conversation, you can get a lot more out of it. Out of this bitch. Notice that he's tightly clenched trying to keep control while she is active and pushing him around and moving around. And now it escalates a little bit, but this is still fundamentally an exposition scene. They're explaining that she is not... Nobody cares about her. She's on the downside. Get in hella more trouble for this than drugs. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass. So this is still exposition, even though it is literally someone getting shot. And now we get our power, the power to save Chloe. We're gonna go ahead and reverse time. But look at that gun. Guns are really highlighted in this game, and it's completely a ruse. We'll talk about that more later. What the fuck? Back in class. That was fast. I need to talk faster I if I want to get all this stuff out. He shot that poor girl. I held up my head. One of the things you may not have noticed is that Chloe was framed such that we were able to see her face for that entire period of time. That tells us that we are really supposed to remember Chloe. Um, and of course we are. Chloe is the main character uh, opposed, you know, opposite our, our Max here. Uh, she's the other important NPC character. Shit! Can you give me an example of a Damn, photographer I cannot who believe this. captured the human condition in black and white? Okay, if I'm crazy... So I'm here's where we start to get our tutorials on how to actually use actually our primary power. I 
did it. Now, I actually did it. For the next 10 minutes or so, it's all going to be um, just tutorial on how to use this power. Anybody? But we're also going to highlight some of the elements. Oh, by the way, take a look at Jefferson here. He is dominating the center of the room, as I explained in the last episode. The room feels very heavily occupied because there's someone in the middle of it. He's also sitting directly on the Chloe and Amber uh, uh, love diagram, which is very symbolic, and I'm sure it wasn't on accident. And any one of you could do that to me. And they're making sure you hear this critical dialogue again. They're really trying to pound it into you while still disguising the fact that it means anything deep. She had a brilliant eye. So she could have taken another approach. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of her work. Shh, shh. I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. Uh, so I know I'm not dreaming course, this. You all know, the it's real. Has been I can tell. The early 1800s. Your generation so I can go back in time. For selfie expression. What if that girl isn't dead yet? That girl I don't can know. I, I have no idea who she is. Always been a vital aspect of the fact that we don't recognize Chloe is actually a really interesting meta point, meta textual point. The power is obviously linked to her relationship to Chloe. But it works even if she doesn't know that Chloe is the one in danger, so it's not welling up from within her. It's somehow, a, you know, pushed onto her from outside. Uh, just more tutorial happening here. But normally powers in these sorts of games or movies or whatever, these all well up from the inside, and they're external representations of someone's internal struggle. Now, the ability to rewind time does represent Max's internal struggles relatively well. She's awkward, and she wants to be able to undo that. She wants to be able to go back and change her awkwardness. Uh, it works well enough. But the fact that she gets her power from Chloe without it welling up at all is interesting. It either means that the power isn't related to Chloe, or it means that Chloe uh, is so important that it doesn't even matter if Max doesn't recognize her. It's a fundamental link. But that's all metatextual stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual the actual progression of the game. It's minor detail points that I'm using to pass the time as we go through this boring-ass tutorial for the 920th time. I've played this room a lot. <laughs> Mainly because it gave the subjects clear defined features. You can learn more when you actually finish reading. Uh, the actual power and what it means and what it does, we're going to talk about that a lot because there are some serious plot holes. Um, and normally I'm okay with plot holes, but they're when they're big enough that the player stumbles into them and actually makes the wrong choices because of them, I have to start to take a little bit of offense. Don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. Do you? Max, you are not crazy. You are not dreaming. It's time to be an everyday hero. So let's go and make the one choice. Oh, this is the this is what he was sitting on. Even if you're submitting your photo for the competition, everybody. It says uh, Rachel and uh, sorry Chloe and Amber. Amber, forget her. Take a look at it. Uh, it didn't take. So hard in the Had to wait a second longer. Uh, Rachel Amber love forever, and he sat on it. I thought it said Chloe and Rachel Amber, but I guess not. Either way, he sat on Rachel Amber. Shot, and I'm sure you know Very you fitting. Like to be We're going to talk to Kate, because this is literally Are the you only okay? you look pale. Uh, Kate, choice that matters. Um, so did we talk at all today? Make sure that we make this the right choice the first here. Time. What's wrong? I'm sorry, I'm just tripping. Too much stress. I know the feeling. I wish we didn't. I do have to go, but we can talk later if you want. I'll see how I feel. Thanks, Max. All right. So once again, we're going to get caught by Jefferson. Excuse me, Mr. Jefferson. So we heard a lot about about Max's character. It's very well established. But we do new we do we do learn new things in this particular exchange. We learn that Max is really a poser. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
And she has no problem making shit up just to try and make herself more popular. Which is really interesting to me because it's... She's basically a bit fake. Um, but it's appealing enough that, you know, it's not like we consider her a villain or anything. Uh, I just I just find it amusing that now that we've had this conversation with him, and I hope you noticed we had more nuanced choices than the first time we had the conversation, but the third time, we're gonna have even more choices. Or rather, an even better choice. And that choice is to... Uh, Excuse me. To be a total Mr. poser Peterson, and you, uh, and steal his quote and Excuse repeat it back me. to him. Victoria. Excuse us. <laughs> so that he'll like us more. Photography's future stars avoid handing in her picture. I actually think that this is a great mechanic. This happens a lot. I'm on top of it. Um, and I think, I think that it John really does give Max life is what happens uh, when you're busy making some everything. interesting depth Max, beyond what we might expect. All the right answers. Good. Um, she doesn't, working on it she doesn't just say things like, oh, I've got to say the right detail here, or oh, I've got to be nice in the right way. No, she'll do things like say, oh, is that uh, the BX2900 uh, blah blah blah? I love those things because of aerial <laughs> folks. She just to to makes shit up. Please, it's hilarious. Please. Uh, and it's kind of cute. Anybody. They'll think I'm crazy. And here we learn to run. Same scene, same ability to. We're still we're still barred from interacting with people, but the urgency is completely different. The song isn't there. We have a goal that's much more profound, uh, and it just feels different, even though it's literally exactly the same level. Okay, Max, retrace every step. I washed my face. I shredded my photo. Then the. Butterfly flew in, and I took a photo. Leave them out of this bitch! I can tell everybody Nathan Prescott is a punk ass who begs like a little girl and talks to himself! So here's another tutorial about our powers. This is impossible to pull off in one setting. We have to do it um, in two tries. They actually time it so that we're unable to do it in one go and we have to rewind. Now look at that. You are not affected by the rewind. You retain facts and inventory objects. Keep that in mind. That is a critical part of the game. Uh, you never lose inventory objects. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? No way. Don't ever touch me again, freak! So here we can see that they're keeping very close track of the gun. And this is uh, sort of trying to highlight the fact that guns are super dangerous. And they later give you a lot of options on how to control them. And it's all a ruse. It doesn't matter what you do with the gun. I'm not against those kinds of ruses. This game is full of them. Every choice that you make is a ruse. Um, almost every choice. It just changes like one line of dialogue later. The, uh, the... I guess the se the, this is uh, the step douche. He's a very important character, but we don't know it yet. He's actually my favorite character in this game, and I'll explain why as we get into his plot uh, in, like, chapter 10 or whatever. Um, either way, at this point, we just are being trained to dislike him. Thank you, Mr. Madsen. The situation is under control. There's no emergency here. Leave Miss Caulfield alone and please... We're establishing the power dynamics of the upper brackets now. Previously, we established the power brackets of the students, and now we know the power in the adults. Although these students are all adults. And here we're going to learn a couple of details. Uh, this is just more tutorial. We're going to learn how to make major choices and what seals them. And we're also going to learn that Hold people on, just can't Things can't go right sometimes. Um, you're just going to have to make the best of two terrible stuff. options. Are this choice okay? does matter, at least I'm some, because uh, you do get a chance to change people. exactly how you much you get abused done. by Nathan. You can always but uh, with me, Max. it's not that important. You could choose either way. It doesn't, doesn't make any strong difference to the plot. It? Well, Max, talk to me. Here we're going to see that most of the adults are two-faced, and that holds true, um, uh, aside from some of the very minor adults. Uh, when he comes up to us being, you know, oh, I'm such a nice guy, but it's very clear by the end of this conversation that he's not on our side. 
Uh, sure? He's only on his own side and the side of whatever is the easiest. I saw everything. He was babbling. He doesn't have to be made a villain to do this. You can be fairly subtle with dialogue. Now, that said, I don't like this exchange. I don't like how it's not blocked. It, nobody moves. It's just flat positioning. We do change camera angles from time to time, but it's very, very basic. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the weakest important conversations in terms of how it's portrayed. So important being, then, you know, not it's not that important. I ran out here wondering what to do. More important than the conversations we're about to have. How's that? Serious charge. I'll look into the matter personally. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. That's it. After what I told we'll you. We'll continue this discussion later in my office. Please go outside with the rest of your class now, Miss Caulfield. Of course this academic drone won't do anything since the Prescott family owns Blackwell now. So now we know more about the situation and it's uh it's done pretty well. One of the things we're going to be talking about very soon is Rachel Amber. Rachel Amber is this missing girl. She went missing before we got to the school. Um I actually thought that Rachel Amber was Max for a while for reasons that will become more and more clear as the story goes on, but that turned out to just not be the case, and it was just a huge coincidence. Either way, however, Rachel Amber has posters all over the school, and she's lauded by everyone. Everyone loves Rachel Amber, including Jefferson. Everybody just adores her, um, and they're all broken up that she's gone, and they cannot wait to talk about her. Uh, even people who don't have anything to say about her still have, are still happy to talk about her. Um, I think the only person that doesn't talk about her is uh, is this drone flying lady in the red tights, Would Nathan Prescott please come who's one of my one of my favorite Thank minor NPCs because she has a Rachel Daria voice. Amber. Now, if you never look at Rachel so Amber's missing missing posters in the school, they'll force you to look at them here. I really like this picture. Um, the artist, I just really like the way that he captured the light on her face. I'm, I'm sure there was some photo reference involved, but it came out really, really well. So, the level design for both of these outdoor areas, this one and the one we're about to enter, is a circle. Um, all of the characters are arranged into a pretty rough circle, and you can basically do a full circuit. It's not large enough that you get lost, not convoluted enough that you get lost, but it's still wobbly enough that it makes you feel like, uh, uh, like this is a natural environment. It's not set up specifically for you to navigate through it, even though it is. So I'll just take you on a quick tour. I'm not going to talk to very many people because most of the time they um, don't have anything that is of use to us. This is Hayden and his harem. Aiden is a drugged out jock that just wants to have fun, but he's relatively nice to us. He's just only interested in getting high. This is Brooke. She has a, um, a drone, and I'll show you. This is the sort of thing I was Hi, talking Brooke. about when I said guess. that Max tends to you be a try-hard poser. We're going to go into it. I'd love to. I love playing I love Brooke's voice. Too. This is neither. Do you know what a drone really is? Even though she's kind uh, of a weapon, jerk. Right? Uh, you read too many conspiracy sites. This might be too complicated for you. Funny. Warren said you were smart. Please, step back. So we're still here in... We've, we've already learned all of the powers that we need, so we've entered into a literal playground. The idea of this pair of, uh, of, uh, of, of quads? What do you want to call them? Parks? The idea of them is that we're able to use our power freely and uh, get a strong feel for how it actually works, you know, when we're in control. And in this case, it works by making Max... Such a tiny drone. It's not, she's not someone who, who has an opinion. She's someone that takes whatever opinion will impress other people. So previously she said, I, I don't really know what a drone is. It is a you weapon? fly my drone. That looks like a high fly drone, model B400 EVO. Now that's a nice piece of tech. You're full of surprises. Why would you know that? Because I want to impress you. I love you. aerial photography. <laughs> Drones are perfect for that, especially those with great range. It's a new era of images. Most impressive, Max. 
Warren said you were multifaceted. Here, give the drone a whirl around campus. So I'm not sure whether or not um, other people felt the same way, but Max is, to me, not established as some sort of perfect hero character, uh, or even someone who's, like, going in the right direction. She's using her powers for incredibly petty things. She's just trying to become a little more popular. Uh, and that's kind of kind of fun. Uh, I kind of like the fact that she's not, not, you know, ideal. I also like this drone flight. Uh, it's one of the many quiet moments in the game where you're allowed to just go at your own pace and do what, you know, nothing, basically. Um, each of them is carefully engineered to use sound and light in its own special way. In this case, the light is cast through this lens that we've got, which is creating this kind of pixely effect. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube. But there's also the audio involved here, which is not just the whirring of the engines. We get the muted sounds of the people below us and a very soft song playing in the background. It really does feel very um, relaxed and natural, and it gives us, uh, it anchors us. It is, this game is really good at quiet moments, and quiet moments are something that a lot of games do very poorly. It's worth putting uh, some effort into your quiet moments and allowing the player to go at their own pace. Okay, I better get to my dorm and grab that flash drive. So that is the big mission here. Warren wants his flash drive back, but he doesn't actually want his flash drive back. He just wants an excuse to see us, and we know it. Let's talk a little bit more about quiet moments, because this is absolutely critical to the design of this game. Quiet moments are a way to let the player so tell you how the player feels. Years. It's impossible to perfectly direct right any right player in these sorts of games, any sort of game. You, you can try and raise their tension or lower their tension, but how much that tension goes up or down depends on the player's mood and whether there's a screaming kid behind them all sorts of details quiet moments and other kinds of optional content allow the player to tell you how they feel and allow you to pull them back to the mean by letting them indulge in that sensation so in this case if the player is feeling super laid back we can just sit here until the player's natural tendencies bring them back up to a more moderate level uh, of tension and more more interest in the surrounding areas again now your game can also do the opposite there are plenty of games where there are optional high tension moments you know like card games um, so those are very powerful techniques to allow the player to self adjust their tension back to what the game actually wants their tension to be doesn't work all the time, like if you're ru rushing up to a boss battle or something, you're going to want to take much tighter reins. But in general, it works okay. So here we're going to meet one of the most flawed characters in the game, and I don't mean that in any sort of writing sense, I mean that in a voice acting sense. There were not very many voice actors, and so when it came to record the minor characters, they just used the same voice actors again and told them to make up a voice or something. But the voice actors, for some reason, they decided that the other voice they were going to use was well, going to be talking through the teeth because no one's going to know you're the same person if you're talking through your teeth. Yo, Justin. Check out the Max. Come to thrash? Oh, yeah? Bring it. What's your first move going to be? Uh, jump? You're such a poser. If you can't even name a simple nose slot or a tray flip, you should walk on. So we're getting more uh, more examples of the fact that she is a poser, and uh, and she's just going to try and impress this kid. She's got no reason to impress. He's he's absolutely not anybody important, um, or even anybody interesting. But uh, we've got to impress everyone we meet. I don't know if you've noticed yet. He's talking through his teeth. Like I said, there'll be a character a, a few minutes from now that does it even worse. Yo, Justin, check out the Max. Come to thrash. I came to no slide. But I'd love to see somebody do a tree flip. We're about to learn oh, a sick. very important a mechanical nah, lesson here. I just can't skate worth shit. Oh, check it. We're gonna destroy some rails for you. What do you want to see? Go for a tree flip. Let's get Trevor all over that action. Yay, Trevor. Ah, uh, uh -huh, Trevor got hurt. Very funny. Let's take his picture.
But, you know, although Max is a little bit of a flake um, and a poser, she's not mean. So we're going to go ahead and rewind time. And have him do the other trick so that he doesn't get his, his balls broken off. Yo, Justin. Check out the Max. Come to thrash? I came... Host. Nah. Hard. Oh. I'd love to see a no slide. Let's Hey, go Trevor. Nice. Of course, we can't get the picture of that. Well, let's take a look at our picture book. What exactly does it look like at the moment? Would you look at that. So we can take a picture and rewind and we keep the picture. Important mechanical lesson. Uh, if you haven't played the game before, I'm actually leading up to the fact that that is an incredibly bad mechanical lesson. We'll get there. Probably not until the next episode, though, because this one's already half an hour long. So this is Daniel, and he wants to sketch What's us. Up, Daniel? Oh, hi, Max. Could I um, ask you a question? The only reason I'm doing this Would is because I want, at the end of the game, I want this person to be at the party, and I don't think you can convince him to go to the party if you don't let him sketch you. I'd be honored this is really just an excuse feel like a muse. to talk well, about Rachel Amber. I've been skipping all of the dialogues. Um, everyone wants to talk Rachel. about Rachel Amber. She's portrayed as some kind of godly figure who is just perfect in every okay. way. Uh, she's the perfect going? chameleon and she Even can socially get along with everyone. Um, she well, also has good uh, the same exact size uh, and body type as Max, to the point where we can wear oh, her clothes. Um, and she has the same color hair as Max, just longer. Uh, you can see why I kind of thought that Good. Max was yeah. Rachel Amber, or maybe Rachel Amber was Max. There's time travel involved in this game. I kind of figured that would be kind of neat, wouldn't it? Best portrait ever. It's not true, though. Uh, not the portrait thing, the fact that she's she's not a Rachel Amber. Rachel Amber. Amber is someone else entirely. Over here, we can talk to uh, Luke. He just wants to know whether or not um, Nathan got, got his ass kicked, and we could tell him yes, but it doesn't. Who cares? We can talk to Evan and get a look at his photo album. Uh, he's super pretentious, though, and it's kind of annoying. I guess it's worth showing off just, just to hey, so, show you the album here. Mind if I check out your cool portfolio? Let's see if you're worthy of it, Max. You'll have to answer a simple question. Who photographed the famous Gee, am I soldier? worthy of looking at your photos? Robert Kappa, of course. I love his work, despite the controversy about that photo. There are very few puzzles right, that you can right. answer correctly on the first this try, and that's one of them. Those things. That's why I'm here. You're a kindred spirit, Max. Would you care for a perusal yep, of my Yep, we're both portfolio? posers. It's not a privilege I grant to many. I'd be honored, sir. So this is hilarious. Um, I want you to just look at the pictures and hear what she says. These photos are great. And Rachel Amber's face is mesmerizing. So the first time I played this game, I was like, why does Jefferson keep calling her gifted? She's not gifted. But uh, the more I looked into how the other pictures in the game are portrayed, the more I realized that her pictures are at least in focus. Uh, these are incredible photographs. Now, obviously, this is largely a budgetary constraint. They couldn't afford to draw 800,000 high-quality pictures. Um, and you're intended to just go ahead and uh, buy the fact that these are great. Um, but for a while, I was like, is that is that on purpose? Are they representing this as a... Uh, um, Max is great because everyone else is absolutely horrible, uh, but I don't think that was the intent. This is a good place for us to stop this episode. It's already been half an hour, um, and I'll pick up the next episode right here. Goodbye.